Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about practical usage of uh, direct current electricity in DC motors. Well, this lecture is just part of the course. The course is called Physics for Teens. Uh, it's presented on unizor.com. Every lecture um, is accompanied by uh, very detailed notes. It's basically like a textbook which you can read synchronously with listening to the lecture or asynchronously. Um, it's also uh, the website also contains the prerequisite course called Math for Teens. Math is absolutely ma mandatory to know um, to a certain extent to know the physics. But today's lecture will be more I would say practical. No calculations, no formulas. Um, so we'll talk about how direct current motors are actually created, what's their design, basic design ideas, etc. By all means I'm not going to talk about all the minute details of how contemporary DC motors are used, but I will try to bring you as close to this as possible without going into the the smallest details so you will not be able to like master every detail but you will understand the principle and that's what I believe is very important also um, I'm not going to talk about how it's done now I will try to present the construction of these motors as they were historically invented because everything starts with a simple idea and then this idea is being developed a little bit better and better until it reaches contemporary level. I think it's very important to understand how it comes from the original idea because actually that's how every creation is made. Uh, first you have idea <coughs> and then you start implementing this and you find this little thing and that little thing which may be an improvement um, but there is an idea in the very beginning which is extremely important and I will pay some attention to this. Okay, now, what's the idea of DC motor? For, well, first of all, do we use and where do we use DC motors? Ye well, wherever the source of electricity is uh, direct current, which mostly batteries, so wherever the batteries are used, we use direct current motors. For example, um, when you start the car, you turn the ignition key or press the button, something starts rotating the main engine, the internal combustion. I'm not talking about electrical mo motors, uh, uh, automobiles right now. I'm talking about electric combustion. Um, so at that particular moment, um, you have starter, and starter is supposed to start the main engine. Well, starter is DC motor. Now, I just mentioned electric uh, cars. Well, obviously, all the motors in the electric cars are DC motors. Um, also, obviously, in all the toys where you have uh, small batteries, AA batteries, AAA batteries that power um, some kind of a motors, like little cars moving. Uh, drones, for instance, uh, they work off batteries, obviously, um, and uh, the direct current motors. In computers, uh, hard disks, for instance, are rotating, that's DC motor. So it's very important to have a nice DC motors, and we do have nice DC motors right now. But the idea is much simpler, much simpler than contemporary construction. I mean, if you will open right now the DC motor of uh, let's say a uh, hard disk of a computer you will see a lot of different things and you might not actually understand that everything is actually based on simple principle and let's start with this simple principle so what is the simple principle well you know that if you have two poles of a magnet well let's say it's something like this this is my magnet okay now, in between, you put a, 
uh, conductor, let's say a copper wire, and you connect it to electricity. So we have electrons moving this way, the current moves from positive to negative, moves this way, the magnetic lines go from north to south, and we know that in this particular case, and every electron which is moving here acts a force, lens force, and um, basically that actually creates the force on the entire wire. So the entire wire would be moving uh, I don't know, either this way or that way. It doesn't really matter. There is a rule of the right hand, rule of the left hand, whatever it is, but it will be perpendicular. That's what's important perpendicular to both the direction of the magnetic lines and direction of electricity, current. So in this particular case, if my uh, magnet is like this, and if my current is, let's say, perpendicular to the board, then the force would be vertical, up or down, depending on direction of the wire, uh, of the current in the wire. So, that's the beginning. What does it mean? It means if you have electricity and magnetic field, you will have the force which will move the uh, uh, conductor which uh, carries this electricity. Great, so this is the first idea. We can convert mechanical and uh, we can convert um, electrical energy and magnetic energy into mechanical movement. Now, from this, we have to build the engine, the motor. Well, in all the practical cases, the motor must actually rotate. I mean, that's the most practical thing. Um, so, we have to find out how to rotate something. Well, next idea. Next idea is instead of just single wire, we will have a frame. And we will put this frame on some kind of an axis. And this would be my battery. Plus and minus. Plus and minus. Now, what happens in this case? Well, look, the current goes this way, goes here, and goes this way. So, these two sides of a frame carry the current in opposite direction. What does it mean? Well, it means that the force which acts on the current um, from the magnetic field would move, would, would force actually one of them in one direction and another side would be in another direction. As we were saying before, the direction of the force depends on the direction of the current well, and obviously the direction of the magnetic field, but the magnetic field is constant. With the current we have in two different directions, two opposite directions, and that's why the force will be in two opposite directions. Now, if you have a frame which is free, freely uh, rotating around the axis, and we have two different forces, well, it will start rotating. Okay, so we are making some progress towards rotating. Okay, now, design by itself will work only until both forces will rotate it significantly enough to position when these forces will be um, opposite to each other. Because if you will look at this from the top, so from the top it will be what? This is one magnet, this is another magnet. So these are lines of magnetic field. Now if my frame from the top looks like this, 
which means there is a wire from here to uh, behind the board and from wire from here behind the board. We are looking from the top. Now, in this particular case, this wire would be moved in one direction and this wire would be moved to another direction until it will turn in such a way that the frame would be perpendicular to um, perpendicular to the um, magnetic field lines. So let me just draw it this differently. So when it perpendicular direction of the current. So in this case my um, force will be perpendicular to both direction of the magnetic lines and direction of the current which means it will be to the right or to the left. So this one let's say would go to the right and back and, and, the, and this one let's put the letters A, B, C, D. So A, B would be moved to the right, CG would be moved to the left, and it will start rotating. When it will reach um, the position when this frame is perpendicular, um, it will be the biggest actual um, rotating moment. But when it will be parallel to these lines, what happens in this case? Well, one of them would move would push this way, another would push this way, they will neutralize each other. There would be no rotating momentum relative to the axis. So if it's this way, there is a rotating momentum. If it's this way, there is no rotating momentum. So our frame would turn like up to a certain position and then it might actually oscillate a little bit and stop. So there is no rotation there is no permanent rotation. We need to do something to make it permanent. Next idea. Next idea is the following. So let's say in this particular, in the leftmost position, okay, when it's really parallel, okay, it looks something like this. In this position, it doesn't move, right? Um, now, what if, as soon as we are coming close to this position, as soon as, we will turn off electricity completely in the frame? What happens? Well, it will, by inertia, it will pass this position of uh, nullifying forces, but there are no forces because there is no electricity. And then as soon as we pass that particular point, we will turn electricity on again in the frame, but in the opposite direction. So if before this was moving this way and this was moving this way, well, when they are in this position, it makes a rotation. But now we have passed, the, passed this rotation uh, this point and we change the direction of the current well now this side of this frame will be moving to this direction and this way will be moved in this direction so after we pass this point it will continue uh, rotating in exactly the same um, direction so in this position my lines my sides goes this way, one goes this way, another goes that way. In this position there is no current at all, so we just move by inertia this way. And now we change the position of the, um, the direction of the current, and now this line will be moving that way and this will be this way, and it will continue rotating the frame. Good idea. Now, if we will accomplish this, if we will switch off electricity immediately, before this dead point, as we can say it, and then turn it in a uh, different direction immediately after, 
then we would have this rotation. Question is how to accomplish this. Well, actually, there is a relatively simple device which was invented for this particular purpose and it's called commutator. Well, commutator is something like this. Imagine a ring. Now, what we will do, we will make these empty things. Here we will have contacts. Plus and minus. Now this ring would be rotating with the frame. So frame is actually connected to this piece of the ring and to this piece of the ring. These two this would be connected to this half and this would be connected to that half of this ring. But now this ring would rotate with the frame on the same axis. Now as it rotates, you see when it rotates at some point, at some point if you will rotate it this way let's say, um, these two contacts, they're, they're called brushes, these two brushes will hit the empty spot and there will be no electricity. But then as we continue rotating the brush which used to connect one side one side of the frame to a positive sign would actually if we would turn it this way after this dead zone this positive would be feeding this one so that's change of polarity and this one which feeds the negative uh, uh, electricity right now it's connected to this one let's say this one but as we turn it a little bit after the dead zone it will feed the other part with negative electricity. So that's how we change the direction of electricity. Now, in the text for this particular lecture on unizor.com, I have some nice pictures, much nicer than these ones. This is just to demonstrate the idea. Over there you will have a little bit better maybe understanding if you will look at those pictures. But it's really relatively simple. This is, again, idea. The implementation can be different how we arrange these rings, how we put it on the same axis with, with frame. These are all, I would say, technical details, but the idea is this, to have this kind of a contact ring, which has two empty spots here, and then how we basically change the direction of electricity in the frame from one direction to another. Okay, so, that's good, and to tell you the truth, if we will just implement this, it will work. And that's how most of DC motors were really implemented. Um, and obviously there are, I mean, first motors, and then there are obvious improvements. For instance, instead of a wire loop, you can have something more solid, like you have a, a coil of wires and the more coils you have the more um, magnetic properties this particular thing has and that's why the uh, action will be a little stronger if you wish but that's details I mean what kind of a material you use for these coils well copper probably but can aluminum work yes probably it can but worse so there are different technicalities I would say but this is the idea the frame connected to a commutator and that's how it would work okay but we have to progress right what's basically really wrong with this kind of a design these brushes these brushes are it's not really the good idea why because first of all they wear off obviously it's mechanical part which is moving. I mean, whenever you have mechanical part moving, it's obviously a problem with wearing, with uh, I know, um, 
putting some kind of maintenance through this, etc. It requires attention. So, brushes are not really good. Another problem with brushes, they might actually produce sparks. Uh, when we are talking about powerful uh, DC motors, sparks, well, that might be dangerous. I mean, what if you have some kind of flammable gases around you? Sometimes you have to. And it's not a good design for this particular reason. So we need mechanical rotation, but we don't need this connection problems with this very, very weak connection between the brushes and, and the ring of a uh, commutator. So we need some other design. Okay, so let's continue. We will continue with brushless design. Okay. First of all, what we can do, and this is easier, we can do a completely reverse model. You will reverse the rows. So, right now in this design, we have permanent magnets statically installed, and this statically part, static part of the uh, DC motor is called stator, 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 whatever. And then we have this frame or a coil inside which is rotating and it's called obviously rotor because it's rotating so stator and rotor now let's reverse what if we will do the following we will have one frame here and the frame here Now, frame acts as electromagnet, we know, right? So there is a magnetic field which is going, let's say, this way, this way, this way, and this way. So this is north, this is south, this is north, this is south. Now, we will use these as static part as a stator and we will use magnet inside on the axis actually it's exactly the same thing because in this particular case north and north they will um, they are going into different direction they repel each other and south and north will attract each other. Same thing here, north and south, and south and south, attracting, repelling. So this thing will move this way until it reaches this position. Well, and stop. Well, oscillate a little bit by inertia because it will turn and a little bit inertia, but then it will go backwards and stop. So what's necessary to do in this case? Well, we will change the direction of the current. So instead of plus minus, we will have minus plus. Instead of north south, we will have south north. And instead of north south, we will have south north. What happens now? Well, this will repel, and this will repel, and this will attract. So it will turn this way. If, if, and we will do exactly the same trick. Trick. At the time when this uh, permanent magnet almost reached this particular horizontal position, we will turn off the electricity. So it will just, by inertia, it will move a little bit here. It will pass this dead point, okay? And as soon as it passes that dead point, we will turn electricity in an opposite direction, like it is right now. So north will go to south, and south will go to north. The same direction, so it will be rotating. Sounds good? Why is it better? 
because we had to re re change the um, direction of electricity in the first design and in the second design. Well, it's much better, because in the first design, this frame in between two magnets was moving all the time, and all these contacts are supposed to be in a moving um, uh, uh, ring of the uh, commutator, which is kind of mechanically difficult, these brushes, etc. Here, what we will do, we will put these two terminals of some kind of device which can switch statically. So I don't so these contacts are not moving as in the commutator ring. They are stationary. Well if they're stationary even the plain switch would work better than brushes, obviously. Like we have this uh, electricity switch which turn on turns on the lights. So we can always do this type of arrangement. But much more than that, with advances in electronics, we can do electronic switch. So we have plus and minus main contacts going here from the battery. And this would be my electronic switch, which will switch based on certain timing or whatever else. Um, uh, we'll, we'll switch the contacts between them. I am not talking right now about electronics inside it, but there is a way to do it. All we need to do, we need the position of the magnet. So we need to detect when it's really in this horizontal position. Well, we might have some kind of a marker. I don't know, maybe light, maybe electri electric contact or, or something. I, I don't really know there are many ways of doing this without actually electrical contact. Um, for instance, you have a light which goes through this position and when it's crossing the light, you have some contact um, closed or some other maybe electromagnetic uh, type. There are many different ways of doing it. And again, I'm not talking about how, but it's solved problem and it's really rel relatively easy. When we will talk about electronics, we might actually discuss this, but not, not right now. Right now we're talking about electricity and DC motors. So there is some kind of a sensor which senses the position of this magnet, goes, signal goes to this switch and switch turns uh, to, 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 to this or to this position by actually connecting differently the, uh, the direction of uh, electricity in these two um, frames. And basically that's it for this particular design. So again, it's better because we have a stationary um, contacts to be switched between, they're not rotating, and we can use electronics to do it, which means there is no mechanical movement except only one movement of this magnet, which is the source of the rotation and that's exactly what we want. So we can put on this axis, we can put anything we want, electric drill or whatever. Okay, now we will talk about improvements to this design, which are kind of obvious, and that would actually lead us to a real uh, DC motor as we use it right now. Okay, my first um, improvement is instead of wire frames we will use coils. Coils are basically frames but repeated many many times and obviously the more um, turns the wire does the stronger uh, magnetic field is created and the stronger magnetic field is created the more power we can get from the motor obviously so these are coils also, for obvious reason, uh, we can put iron core inside, so that's the real electromagnets. So you know that if you, if you put iron core 
inside the coil it increasing it's increasing the magnetic properties of this electromagnet why because iron has um, uh, temporary magnetism properties so whenever you have the current going into the coil around it the um, the atoms are arranging inside the um, the iron in such a way that they are pointing to the same direction which basically is the source of magnetism if you remember when we were talking about what is basically magnetism permanent magnets have this the same orientation of all the axis of the uh, of the atoms well at least important at atoms so uh, and again the iron has a temporary magnetism so whenever you switch the direction of the current the um, the atoms of iron are reorienting immediately and that produces the magnetic field in a different direction north and south change to south and north and that's what we need so we are making our um, stator stronger stronger electromagnets okay that's number one number two which is also very important I mean look at the movement of this magnet when it's in this position the rotation rotation moment is strongest right so the force which turns it the stronger in this case because there is a bigger radius from the top to the middle because it's actually the top which we are rotating right so it's um, it, it's, it, it's a stronger um, momentum now as we are moving to this direction momentum is very weak because actually these two forces are kind of stretching this magnet so they're working against each other here they're helping each other to turn it in this case they're actually not very much helping but we are passing the dead point a little bit but still the the, the, this particular uh, perpendicular to the axis uh, uh, um, the radius uh, is, is very actually small in this case because that's what happens so if force goes this way and this way we have to multiply force by this distance right to get momentum so they're working kind of against each other but in this position momentum is greater because we multiply by this length okay so how can we overcome this problem you see if we will just leave it as is it will not be a, a uniform rotation it will be kind of stronger and then weaker stronger and then weaker so it will just move like this which is not really good well here is the idea let's put another pair of magnets here and here what we will do I mean we can do with switches anything we want right now using electronics we will use these two whenever our magnet is in this position but at this position we will switch these off and we will use these two as the source of magnetic field so we will use four instead of two and the rotation will be smoother so instead of just going uh, stronger and then weaker and then stronger in this position we will have we will have stronger weaker from these but stronger from these so that what makes much smoother rotation so the magnetic field would be actually stretched along these lines and then as my magnet uh, is turning at some point I'm switching about 45 degrees we are switching these off and switching these on and it will continue turning it's smoother so instead of too strong and too uh, and too soft spots we will have four strong and four strong uh, and four uh, uh, weak spots and the weaks will not be as weak 
those strongs will be really stronger. That is kind of a rotating magnetic field. And that's the key to arranging more and more um, uniform rotation. Because instead of four, I can put six. six electromagnets and turn them sequentially on to make even smoother and the more electromagnets I put the smoother smoother rotation will be because the smoother magnetic field would rotate so all I, ha <coughs> all I have to do is to understand how to switch from one to another to another to another let's say if you have six then every 60 degrees of turn I have to um, switch something, switch something on and something off in whatever direction we need. And that can be accomplished through electronics. It's a lot of wiring, obviously. These are all coils and the coils should be connected somehow, etc. But it's all, you know, it's all done once and then there are no movements, basically. Everything is done electronically switching. All I have to do is some kind of a sensor which is basically senses the position of this um, magnet. It's this way or this way or this way. Okay, that's a very important improvement. We are creating a rotating magnetic field. That's what it is. Rotating magnetic field. Now in, practic in, in, in practical case we don't really have to um, switch off immediately as we are leaving, for instance, this particular direction. We don't have to switch it off here and on here. We can continue uh, switching on, for instance, this and this, if it's in this position, this and this can be on, and this and this. So it will be uh, turning, because this is still helping, right? So we don't have, we don't have to switch it off, because this magnet is still helping when we are in this position. So anyway, it can be arranged. The idea is the most important. Rotating magnetic field. And one more improvement, which is actually also very important. Instead of having this bar magnet in the very beginning, in the very center of this circular arrangement of electromagnets, what I can do, I can have a ring magnet. What is a ring magnet? Well, if you have a one magnet and another magnet, and then you bend them so that they are connected here and here, well, here you have a ring magnet, right? It also has north and south, but it's a ring. Why is this is better? Well, if this is my ring magnet, it actually is much smoother rotating than the bar, obviously. Because it's all symmetrical. And since the radius is larger, it has more inertia. And the more inertia you have, again, the more uniform your rotation will be. So this is actually the design of contemporary DC motors. You have a magnetic ring. Inside you have certain number. You can have six, you have nine, you have 12. All you need is electronics which are um, switching the electricity in these electromagnets on and off uh, properly and that would actually suffice. Well, that's it. Um, the most important part actually about DC motors is that using some electronics, some smart electronics, which we are not really talking about how, we can arrange on and off of different contacts and then arranging circular arrangement of these electromagnets 
we are creating a rotating magnetic field. Rotating magnetic field causes this magnet, permanent magnet, which is in the form of a ring, to rotate. And then you can obviously install some kind of a whatever we need to install on it. Fan or whatever. Propeller. Well, that's it. Um, I would suggest you again go to the Physics 14 course on Unisor.com. Um, these are, um, uh, I think it's uh, electromagnetism part of the course, and uh, the particular topic is um, electromagnetic properties of the current, of DC current, direct current, and in there you will find this lecture about DC motors. I suggest you to to read it. There are nice pictures over there which might help you. Um, and again, the the main um, idea of this particular lecture is that we are creating a rotating magnetic field. Just remember it, it's really very helpful and it will help us with alternating current. Thanks very much and good luck.